but these are sensory cannons. They don't throw anything out. Anyway, the, the people who live in this world need, need to understand the world in which they live. And you have to convey information with your telescopes. It's not just seeing things. People meet us in the national parks. Many people have told us this. Finding you in the national parks with these telescopes is the highlight of our summer trip. And then they tell us that it's not just the telescopes. It's the slideshows you give first. And some have said it's not even the slideshows. It's the talk on relativity and quantum mechanics that you do in the slideshows. <laughs> People have to understand why they're here, how they're here, where they're here. All those things people have to understand. Now, it's not true that everybody is very anxious to understand all these things, but some are, and those are the people that make it worthwhile. Now, I think you people should quiz me. I like to answer questions. If information comes in answer to a question, we have some use for it. If it doesn't answer a question, we have another ear to let it out. You must have noticed. Yes. If we want to do programs, say for a park or for a kind of an institution or for anything, like a sidewalk, all right, she wants to know how do you do programs like this. I need to say some things about that. We have run many, quite a few years with a 24 incher. We've run 80,000 miles through the national parks, through the Indian reservations, through the state parks, down to Mexico and up to Canada. But uh, there are some difficulties that you run into. First, you have to make arrangements with the rangers in the national parks. So I have to tell you some stories. They're fairly ugly. <laughs> Yellowstone didn't want us. Don't come. So we just drove through. Didn't get the telescopes out. At, Gra at uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, we were told that there are two places where we could set up the telescopes, either at Hidden Valley or at a visitor center at 11,000 feet. <laughs> Ooh, Baba. So when we got there, we found that our vehicle parking place is right behind an amphitheater. And there's flat ground there, no trees, and there are going to be people there. And so we asked, can't we just get the telescope out right there? Oh, no, you might attract a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed Hidden Valley because the public is locked out. We're allowed this visitor center at 11,000 feet because no one's there after 6 o'clock. So we pushed, but we first of all fled to the YMCA. The YMCA has 3,000 people a day. 2,000 people a day look through the sun telescope. But we fled right away to the YMCA with those big telescopes. But we pushed, and we pushed at the National Park. Finally, the naturalist said that there's a, a, a ranger going to give an astronomy talk at such and such a place on Wednesday. You can go there if you like, and after she is through, you can ask if it's all right to set up the telescopes. So we went, and we listened to what she said. I hope she's in this audience. Eight or nine out of ten things that she said were wrong. I really hope she's here, because I owe her something. No, not because of that. You'll hear it. In just a moment, you'll hear it. So uh, we listened, and when she was through, we, we asked her if it's all right to put up the telescopes. Well, she was furious. She said, they have no business to do this to me. I'm 19 years old. I have never studied astronomy for five minutes. They have no business to do this to me. I told you they're ugly. <laughs> anyway, the next day, she talked to the people for five or ten minutes and flushed them down the tubes. <laughs> 
Anyway, but at the YMCA, we had many people looking through the telescopes. We said the 24 and the 18 and stuff up over there. And they said, if we had known you were coming, we would have put you up in buildings and we'd have given you the auditorium for your slideshows. Anyway, we have some other stories about the national parks. We used to go to Yosemite. When our 24-incher was first finished, I said to Brian Rhodes, that Glacier Point in Yosemite must be the best place in the whole world for a public telescope, but there's that damned hotel. <laughs> anyway, we took it up there anyway, and we found out that the hotel has just burned down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I met a young lady there. She said, I was in the hotel when it burned down. I said, we're very happy to have met you. <laughs> Anyway, so we, st we have had the 24-incher at Glacier Point for more than 100 nights in the course of 12 years, and the seeing conditions there are the best that we have tested. You cannot test it till it, you, this thing's still making that awful noise. Can you still hear it? Yes. Well, if you can still... <laughs> can you fix it out here? Is that okay? All right. I've never been wired in this particular way. <laughs> anyway, the seeing conditions at Glacier Point are extremely good. They're, it's very quiet, and it's warm at night, and it's very transparent. Uh, anyway, and, but right now I think it's uh, considered a day use area, so not a lot of people there. But we used to get 300 people there uh, looking through the telescopes, but we give a slideshow first. In the national parks, almost always, we give a slideshow first before we flush them down the tubes. Because you cannot convey all that information at the eyepiece. You can't do it. If you can talk to them first, then when you get them out under the telescopes, you see here, looking into the telescopes, I climb the ladder, the 12-foot ladder, and I make an announcement, say this one's on M13, that's a globular cluster, I tell them something about it. The stars are 17 billion years old, made of nice clean hydrogen and helium and so forth. And I'll tell them the little one, that's the 18-incher, is uh, on, say, the ring nebula. It's a gaseous envelope around an old star. Don't use the word planetary. It is meaningless. <laughs> I know that's one thing I'm against Herschel, and that's about the only thing I get against Herschel. But it's okay for astronomers to talk that language, but don't use it in public. <laughs> <laughs> and the same with open clusters. What does that mean? And these astronomers talk about umbras and penumbras on the sun, shadows on the sun. It's hopeless for the American public or anybody else's public. You have to convey information. If you're going to do sidewalk astronomy, you have to convey information to these people. And you have to talk to them in their own language, not in astronomers' language. They don't understand that kind of stuff. Well, anyway, how to get on to all that? <laughs> Anyway, we've been to Glacier Point a lot, but we don't go there now because the man who is there now, he's from Griffith Park, Dave Balo, he wants help with his Friday and Saturday evening programs, I understand, and he invites the amateurs, uh, one week one club, one week another club like that, but I understand the telescopes have to be taken down at midnight. We're not going to run to Glacier Point with a 24-inch and take it down at midnight. Not going to do that. Anyway, we used to sit there for two weeks at a stretch. Every night for two weeks at a stretch. We'd give a slideshow and run them down the tubes. But Dave Carricker was there. He was the chief naturalist years ago. He said that the... Uh, he said that the... Uh, 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 the Johns on that concave hill are going to have to go anyway. Put an amphitheater in there on that concave hill. And then you, you'll give a slideshow there. The range will give a sunset talk out at the point. Then we'll bring them in here. You give a slideshow against those dark trees. And then we'll put the, send the people down along a path with various telescopes on various objects. And then put the 24-inch down in the hotel basement. That is to say where the basement used to be. 
<laughs> we never met him again. 